Pete Calandra here, and welcome to episode 14 of Inside Track. This is my weekly music education video where I pick a topic and spend between an hour and 90 minutes going over it. We'll be picking up this week where we left off last week with a continuation of a deep dive into my score for the 96 effect. For more information on this NBC Peacock docuseries, please check a link in the description box below. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe. And to be notified, ring that bell. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching, and let's get right into it. On this next cue, which is number 16, we continue on with the sports highlight music. And this is another variation that's very loosely related on the one that we just went over. Just got a few figures in it that are similar to what we just heard, and that's how it sort of ties together. And with this one, I wanted something to be, we're a team, and we're coming back from being down, and we're working together, and it's proud, and sort of that kind of a feeling, as opposed to this just being wild action. The middle section here where there's the horn melodies, I think, does that. So let's take a listen, and then we'll break it down. See, that's very similar to the brass. Da -da 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 -da. And here we go, here's our chord progression. But see, this is so different right here, and this next section is very different coming up. We're determined, we're coming back from way down. <laughs> and here's our brass melody coming up right now, go. And then it repeats and does an ending. It's a little bit different the second time around. But let's break this down. Let's start with the percussion. So let's solo that. And I've got a lot of tracks grayed out because it was using up a lot of processing power. So let's see what I mean. So right there, we've got the hi-hats going. Here we are. Uh, right here. Right, and that's Easy Drummer. She's an Easy Drummer, isn't that a Phil Collins song? And then this loop from Stylus. Right, and then that's, this right here is a hit of damaged drums. And I sound designed that and reversed it. And now we're driving in a little bit more now. I'm using this for a snare right here. And that plays with the bass. And then with the rhythm section there, let's keep the bass going. Got Right, so here's something where I blend the Wurlitzer on the right side and a Rhodes on the left side. And that gives you sort of a really cool hybrid electric piano. And 
that goes nicely with the low brass, I believe. Let's see. So let's pick it up from right here. And this is the low brass right here. So that just adds a nice fullness to that. And then again, there's this sp really spiky. Da -da 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 right? Da -da 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 -da. So we're in F minor now, which is a little bit different. Right, all the other ones were in E minor, so now we're just in a different key with this. And that's very 70s kind of string writing right there, very retro sports stuff. I got those strings going, and let's see, where's my Abbey trumpets right here? Right, so just do it instead of everybody playing that line together, dee -dee 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 -dee, which would sound really mechanical. Um, just doing those accents in the brass there, and then that's doubled with orchestral tools. And then we have this little breakdown section here. I recorded this as audio again, just trying to save some CPU power. And I've got that going through the devil lock. Just adding some crunch to that. And then there's this, these two pads. And then I'm also using now, I want to make this a little bit edgier. I've got the London Contemporary Orchestra spiky cellos, right? The vivid spiccato. You can certainly do this with this particular library because it's very dry. But I've used this uh, transient designer to... And I've done a little bit of devil lock. So let's, if I bypass these two, that adds just some spikiness to the attack. And that is louder, but it's also got a, more of an edge to it, right? So you can sound design this one because there's very little reverb on it. It's very dry. And that goes along with our short synths and our pad synths. with our drums. Got this hi-hat right here, our ride cymbal. So that's kind of cool. And then now we go into this really proud section right here at uh, 21. That's just basically going from the flat six chord up to the one chord. So basically D flat major up to F minor. And again, you see I throw those little suspended things in there occasionally just to break up the fact that they're triads and to make, just give a little bit of interest there. And over that bed comes in our uplifting horns. And then the second time through, I add the trumpets. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And then back to the driving section. Now, in future cues, this section is, is worked out and, and re revised and brought in in different contexts. And I believe in some of the future ones that we'll be going over.
let's just check out the end. And again, I'm stacking the London Contemporary Orchestra, these more spiky. Right, just so that they, it helps it cut through a little bit more. And that's the end of this one. At this point during the process, the filmmakers are into the edit. And they're looking ahead to how they're going to construct these stories. They gave me a brief that basically asked me to create a piece of music that started out with building something and then moved into a more positive, uplifting section where you are meeting those expectations and things are coming together and you've got success. So let's take a listen and see how I accomplish that. Now, this is just in the abstract. Remember, I'm composing music in, in advance of the edit for this particular project. getting up early hours, long runs. You don't want to be too over the head with this stuff, right? You just want to have it there so this way it'll cut, they'll, they'll mix it louder for you and you want to have some place to go. So let's break that first half down and then we'll take a listen to and work through the second half. Now, one of the things that is a big part of music that I compose is the influence of Afro-Cuban music. And wherever I can get those rhythms into anything, I really work on it. It doesn't have to be strike you over the head, salsa music. It could be as simple as orchestrating a montuno and a tumbayo, which is the montuno is the ostinato piano figure and the tumbayo is the bass figure that is syncopated against that. And I kind of worked on that with this particular piece here. So let's go through that and I'll talk about it. So we start off with this syncopated harp. Da, 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 da. Right, you can hear that that's sort of got a Latin flavor to it. And then we've got this figure on the Wurlitzer electric piano. And what this does is it harkens back to those four chords that are in the main theme. It's not an exact transposition. Because note that it's all over a pedal point, over a D. And it goes, it's a little bit different chord progression. So here it's not a D minor, it's a D suspended seventh and here we've got a uh, sort of like a g suspended over d and then here we've got a g minor over d and back to this sort of like a i don't even know what you'd call that but it's kind of like a another kind of b flat chord over d so this is all over a pedal point but it's still that four chord idea that i came up with for the main theme which was in the previous episode Let's take it from here. And they got the little syncopation, the little anticipation of beat three. And then on top of that, we let's see which voice pad is that. halfway through that
get that voices. And then right here, just a little break, some more spacey pad sounds. So this is right here, right? A montuna would be something like dum ba boom bum bum ba doom bum 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 ka doom bum, right? This is a variation on that. And this is going while the bass is playing this very syncopated bass line. This is not exactly a montuno because a montuno would anticipate the downbeat, but it does anticipate everything but the downbeat, and there is a lot of activity in there. So Okay, so we're going to be monit we're monitoring this through the actual stems and not the MIDI tracks this time. So let's take a listen to the drum kit and hear what that sounds like. Just on that ride cymbal. And this was done in Easy Drummer, for sure. And here we go when the track comes in. Doom, goom, goom, doom, boom, boom, and you know how that fits in perfectly with the bass. And very, very, very Latin kind of rhythm. And with the keyboards. And I kept that keyboard a Wurlitzer instead of making it a Rhodes or an acoustic piano because I was thinking in my head Santana, Abraxas, old school music. I always loved the sound of some of those tunes and Greg Raleigh, the keyboard player, did play a Wurlitzer on some of those on that album. And I just sort of had that sound in my head. And even though this doesn't sound like any of those songs, it's got a vibe that I, I kind of was influenced by. And then with that, we've got the solo strings doubling that melody. Okay, so why are there no strings there? So that's violin and cello and octave doubling the piano. That's just a sending line. Boop ba do ba bee. Ba do ba bee. And then we've got this little breakdown in the middle here. And the way that that's orchestrated is I've got the nylon string guitar. And that's playing with, oh, the Zimbira. So that's the Zimbira pitched way down. It's doing that dun 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 dun. So here we go. And that high overtone is in that as well. And now when we get to this next bit, we've got the mandolin swarm. And notice all of that delay on there. That's from the H delay from Waves. I'll print that right onto the track. And that's being doubled by the solo violins. So let's... Really cool aggregate sound. And again, that ostinato on the piano is highly influenced by a montuno. It's a variation on it. You can hear if I start singing those kinds of rhythms, where I derive a lot of my stuff from. Afro-Cuban music has influenced so much American music, it's beyond belief. So why deny it? Just embrace it and use it. It's incredible, incredible music that I love.
All right. And, you know, use your own creativity to take those rhythms and employ them in something that's a little bit different than you would expect. So this is kind of cool. I've got the synth pad here. So I seem to have this, the voices mixed down to the synth pads track. That's all right. Now here, notice I've changed to the roads. And that's doubling a piano. So if we look here, we've got the acoustic piano. This is the figure here. D da 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 D da 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 da. And that's doubled between the roads and the acoustic piano. And that's a sound that I really like quite a bit. One, two, here we go. And and add our Right, so we add that little offbeat figure in the nylon string guitar. Then, then, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that nylon string guitar is actually functioning more like a bass line there, so it's more like a tambayo. Okay, so that's the first half of this, and I think that's very effective. And then let's listen to the transition into the next bit, which is supposed to be inspirational and uplifting. Layering sounds in every time around. It's very circular. You can hear that horn. Now we've got the trumpets and a little variation here. And it just goes and does a sort of like a break, a, a, not a fade out, but sort of a reverse pyramiding of the sounds and out. So let's take a look at what we've done here. So we start off with our harp right here, and it's got this figure. And again, with the Latin music influence. Whoops, huh, that's interesting. So that gives us an ostinato, and like I said before, this has sort of a circular feel to it where the chord progression goes round and it comes back, and every time through, I sort of have superimposed over that an arch structure where things dynamically grow over time and get higher and higher in t intensity, and then on the back end, they decrease in intensity. So that starts off, and then we've got our high pulsers with that. Let's just solo that. Oh, so that's right. So that's that sounds like an aggregate of the marimba swarm and some and some sort of let's see. And the celeste bells, the celeste balls from Omnisphere. Yeah, and so that starts that out, and then. 
we pick up with a chamber spiccato right here that gets added on top of that. Right, so let's take it from here again. So again, that da 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 dum, right? And and that rhythm has been in so many cues for this. So again, that's another thing that kind of ties it together. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of these elements, right? The way that you take the concept and the idea and the way that you develop and expand upon it and completely different style, right? Use it for different emotions and moods. So earlier, bump, 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 bump. It was a, a driving bass line with that rhythm, but here it's an uplifting da, do, da, and a little variation on it. So this is how you develop your ideas over the long form of an entire score. And then there's a cello that comes in. Where's our cello? The yellow, green, right with an ascending figure. Mm. And that's our harmonic progression for this bit. And then we have, this time through, we've got the Neo Spiccato. So let's add that in there. And notice how I'm blending Chamber Spiccato and Neo Spiccato, keeping the groups small. I don't want the strings to be huge. That's... So you could see how they sort of intertwine with each other. And that creates an aggregate rhythm. The, the first string part starts right on the downbeat. And then they both start on the downbeat here, but this one has, notice that there are, where this has space, this has a little bit more motion. And here they're both playing at the same time, but they're doing contrary motion. But the phrase starts a little before, so you get some overlapping. And then some harmony there, right? Let's uh, go back to, right, so let's look at our, our brass. Hmm. Hold on. I recorded that. Bad work with the... Uh, Mod wheel there. Okay, so now the trumpets start together. And then there's a little harmony here. Ascending, getting higher and higher. And landing back. Let's hear how that fits into the mix. Oh, that little sloppy there. That's what happens when you've got 15 million deadlines all happening at the same time. <laughs> all right. And also just a very light drum. Got the foot high hat doing, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, in the mix, I don't even miss that that mistake that I made there. It doesn't bother me at all. Land all on the tonic together, and now we're doing the reverse arch. Right? Instruments are dropping out, dropping out. Less and less instruments, and then the tempo slows down, and then we've got a nice resolving chord. One other thing I want to point out with the brass, and you can see here is that, whoops, I leave space, breath. And then a breath here. Breath, right? Make sure when you're doing brass and woodwinds that you leave spaces for breaths. You might not notate it that way. The players would normally know where to take their breaths, but to make a performance, you have to put that stuff in there. Okay, so that's finished. With, this is cue number 18. Let's move on to the next one. One thing I'd like to show with this particular cue, which is cue 22, is that I've made four mixes. You can see them here. I've got an ambient mix, I've got a hard ending, I've got a highlight mix, and a reflective ending. So I just made those mixes so that this one cue becomes usable in four different spots. So that's kind of cool. What I'm going to do is go through the main one and then just show you the differences in the other three mixes. At this point in the process, the filmmakers are deep into editing. They know what's coming up soon, and they're looking at the music and there's stuff that they don't have or stuff that won't fit in some of the storylines coming up. So they asked me to work on a piece that had the kinds of parameters of this piece. So let me play it and then I'll talk about it. These rhythms getting familiar yet? Again, the through line doesn't have to be a melody. and we're going to be out. So the brief was storytelling about pre-competition. Then competition. Then stop the competition music or the highlight music in the middle and make something at the end that was a little bit more reflective. Things didn't go as we planned. So I think that that comes across with this particular cue. It starts off here with this Marimba. Now, on this particular patch, I used 8DO 
uh, aged marimba. Again, I'm starting to add some extra instruments here as I'm building up my template even bigger for each cue. And that's being processed through this. I used to use this plugin in the early 2000s all the time, and it's sort of fallen out of favor with me. I looked at it, and for this particular cue, I, I thought, let me resurrect this and see what this was like. And it works pretty well for this tap delay. You notice that there's the left delay is panned really hard, and then the right is panned really hard. And they're just a little bit out of sync. It gives us a nice dun da dun da dun And then that's also going through H delay. Yes, you can have multiple delays, and again, and then a high pass filter just to clean out some of the low end. Creating sounds, doing this stuff, it's part of being a 21st century composer. I've said this over and over again in the series. Learning how to manipulate sounds in the music that you write will greatly enhance the orchestration value of your music. And then there's Zimmer percussion delays. Let's listen to this. That comes in right here. So this is the Roland Space Echo that Arturia makes, and it's just a different kind of delay. Ah, so there's our mandolin swarm with our melody. And again, with we've seen figures like this in the previous one during the ascending part. Right, in, in a few spots. All right, and then what else is going on in this track? We've got some drums, we've got acoustic bass, and we've got the Stratus piano, so let's take a listen to that guy. Oh, so these are rhythmic waves. Interesting. And then that is also going through, cutting off some of the high end, HEQ. And I find with a lot of Spitfire stuff, I have to add a trim to bring it up to pit the volume. And let's hear how that fits in with the bass. And there's that bomb, bomb, bomb. That rhythms come in over and over again throughout this this whole score, and see it works in a different way now. And then here we go, competition music. And again, we've seen this da 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 da. We've seen that rhythm in a few cues now. This is just a variation on it. Instead of it being da 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 da, it's da 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 da. Right there's so there's a few spots where it hits on the beat, mostly the on beat one and on beat four. But besides that, it's all on the off beats. And then, and then here same rhythm but change the pitches and it's really adds to the phrasing da, 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 right a little different rhythm and that's very retro sports music got those low brass in there and that's being doubled with the left hand of the piano which is a cool That's a really cool orchestrational technique. And then we've got this figure here. Now that's a total Montuno, right? You can almost hear that. 
being played on a piano, except it's being played on a wind ensemble. All right, and then we got the scale that goes up, transitions us, transitions us into this more reflective spot. So this omnisphere, choir women, and what have we done to this? Ah, put it through the Brower motion. Just to hear how it's changing there. And through Shimmer Verb. So I actually own an H9 guitar pedal, H9 Max they call it, and that's not being made anymore, I don't think. And because I was an owner and I was registered, Eventide gave me access to all the same algorithms on the pedal as plugins, which I thought was unbelievable. I've actually purchased some of their plugins as well. So I do support the company. They make great stuff. And this is just a really great effect. So that's without, right? And have I done anything here with the Yeah, I drove that resonance you can see right here. So that's a really cool sound. Right, there's our Stratus. I love that Stratus it for specific uses. And that's, oh, there's some ricochet strings in there. Anything to make it ambient. That's not ricochet, what is that? No rosin, okay. Trying to get as many different colors into my string writing as possible. It really keeps the listener engaged. Version two of this, let's take a quick look at these. So it starts off the same and I believe it has a hard ending. So it's the same piece up until that point. And this would be like a sports highlight mix. And if they just wanted to use this bit, and I did this from editing the stems. So I took this one cue and with like another hour's worth of work, I created four pieces of music that they could use. All the way on to the end. That's a good look at this one. Let's move on to the next. At this point in the process, I had caught up with all of the music styles that they had requested for some of the edits coming up and went back to just composing music abstractly. For this particular piece, what I wanted to achieve was an old school sports highlight track that was really driving with really gritty bass and drums. Let's take a listen and we'll go through it on the other side.
All right. Let's take a look at that bass. So the bass is just pounding out that one note. I believe we're in the key of C minor here. Again, using that Rickenbacker bass. Yes, C minor. And I'm monitoring the audio tracks here instead of the MIDI tracks. So we can solo the bass. Just using right some compression so that we're getting a little bit of a pulse, sort of like a pumping. And when I did the final mix after there were conforming aspects to the project that I had to do, once that was done and was making the final mix of this track, I really drove that home even more but you can still hear it on this particular bit. So we're starting off with just a kick in the kick drum. Ah, yes. Our marching band drums. So then we've got our big strings right here. Dee dee you da ba da you da Oh, that's the low strings. So let's go back here, big strings high. So we can watch both of these. Right, the low strings doubling the bass. Now, this kind of rhythmic activity differs from what we've been hearing previously in that there are several spots where it lands right on a beat. So this is in triplet feel. So I'm one, two, three, for really driving each beat home. It's like a machine, an assembly line working and driving. And making use of the blues note in the melody line. There's an F sharp. Right there. Back at that dun. And then that brass bit there. Ba -da -boom. So that's the Abbey trumpets and I probably low Iceni brass. Oh, Abbey Road low, low brass. Beat it. Nah. Beat it. Notice how this low note doesn't come in every time, it comes in every other time. Bound. One. Off. One. And now we're in E flat major. We go up to the relative major here for a really heroic, proud, we're winning. Legato. Right, and then there's the trumpets answering that. Oops, let's continue on. Just driving in those quarter notes. Notice, kept the long note here and then the rhythmic notes here. Let's listen to that with everything else. And the other thing that, that helps us tie through, there are the four chord, the four chord, chord progression here. One, two, three, four, repeat. Let's listen to our drums. I'm using something a little bit different with this one. Using the Roger Taylor drums and I recorded those as audio. So the kick drum is from the Roger Taylor drum kit and then the cymbals are from Easy Drummer I believe. Yeah I, I went and uh, recorded all that as audio, committed that. Easy Drummer right there.
Oh, and notice I've got a little bit decapitator on the drums to add some drive to them. Let's add the orchestral percussion. I've got other stuff there. So that's damaged drums. And Roger Taylor is from Spitfire. And then this drum fill right here really driving it with decapitator and then adding some 480 plates and probably EQing yeah do a high pass filter on that again sound designing your sounds to get as part of your orchestration technique it's really important and there doesn't seem to be any winds happening any of this stuff up here the purple tracks let's hear what happens towards the end okay so the second time through it repeats the whole bit but i've got these strings coming in It's, it's funny, that's the Abbey Road strings. You can really hear that it was recorded in England. Uh, if you think back, there was that group, The Verge, in the 90s that had that big hit song where they sampled something from the Rolling Stones, and I think the strings for that were recorded in Abbey Road for the original track, and just, I've got that sound in my head. It's funny. And the second time through the brass, the low brass is in there. One, two, here we go, low brass. That brings us to the end of this video and this two-part series. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this information will be useful. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Leave any comments or questions down below. One thing I would humbly suggest you do is to sign up for the Peacock TV service, which is free, and watch the three episodes of The 96 Effect. It's a really great project that I'm proud to have been part of, and you'll get to see how all this music fits in context with the video. Again, thank you so much for watching. I've been Pete Calandra, and I'll catch you on the next one.